and it's a practice that remains a blot on the conscience of the world today. And many people have had issues. Many were, were bought, abused, and shipped from Africa to Europe, America, and other parts of the world to serve as slaves. These countries that bought the slaves used them to advance their developmental agenda, getting them to work in farms as laborers, among others. It was a hard and painful period for Africa, which probably just the, the, the continent left it in poverty. But trade means that there was a buyer and a seller. So who should pay the compensation? Well, we'll find out soon. First, Latif reduced a report capturing the meeting of African leaders in Accra to demand reparation. When she took the stage, the chairperson of the AU Commission, Dr. Monique in Sanzabaganwa said, the call for reparation is not necessarily to rewrite history, but to right the wrongs that have not been addressed for centuries now. The demand for reparations is not an attempt to rewrite history or to continue the cycle of victimization. It's a call to recognize the undeniable truth and right the wrongs that have gone unpunished for far too long and continues to thrive presently. Reparations demonstrate our shared commitment to justice. Chairperson of the African Union, His Excellency, uh, President Azali Asumani of the Union of Comoros said, slavery has done irreversible harm to the African. He explained the scope of the reparation the African Union is asking for. Like other leaders in attendance, Prime Minister of Togo, Victor Tomega Dogbe, who delivered a speech on behalf of President Ford Nasingbe said, the call for reparations is to highlight the scars of the atrocities and painful legacies left behind by slavery and the call for accountability. Uh, coloni colonization uh, uh, and slavery were weapons used to destroy our people. And they, were, they also put in place immaterial weapons, and the consequences were losses of human lives. And these are, this cannot be quantified, such losses. And we would have the necessary compensation to repair what was destroyed by colonialism. Colonialism. What many people do not know is that in order to end the slave trade, the UK took out the largest loan in its history, and this particular loan we did not pay off until 2015. This means that I, the descendant of enslaved peoples taken to Brazil and the Caribbean, and the descendant of colonized peoples of Ghana through taxation myself, paid towards the slave owners and not the enslaved. And all the reparations are supposed to be given to people of Algeria and all this, all this that we are saying, Algeria is making effort in order to make sure it benefits economically and also it will fight all the crimes that the people of Algeria have faced. Algeria has also carried away and also has recognized that the, uh, the countries should not only concentrate on the reparation, but it must also consider ways that will lead to the sustainability of development, be it economic, social, or political. Not long ago, we stood and moved in the face of adversity to confront the servitude of colonial subjugation and racial discrimination fearlessly. With singular determination, we reclaimed our dignity, freedoms, and right to shape our future. Thank you, Ghana. In Kiswahili, Asante Sana, Ghana. President Ekufuara on his turn said, being the first sub-Saharan African country to gain independence, Ghana owes a special responsibility to Africans in the diaspora. Thus, the need for the just call for reparation. When the British ended slavery, all the owners of enslaved Africans received reparations to the tune of some 20 million pounds sterling. 
the equivalent today of some 20 billion pounds sterling, but enslaved Africans themselves did not receive a penny. Likewise, in the United States of America, owners of slaves received $300 for every slave they owed. The slaves themselves received nothing. Native Americans have received and continue to receive reparations. The Japanese American families who were incarcerated in internment camps in America during World War II received reparations. So there's been calls. I mean, this would not be the first time President Kufuado, for example, is making a call for some kind of a reparation. He's made a call several times, and we are yet to get a concrete response from the people who benefited from the, from, from the slave trade. Now, uh, in the studio here with me to look at the issues and to see if the call is legitimate, is Jafta Igomero. I hope did I get the name right. We'll hear The end is silent. Thank you very much. He's a founder of over hero or herero yes people's memorial reconstruction foundation and he's here with me in the studio so maybe yes so we are asking for reparation yes some will say that we've been demanding unconditional apology yeah. we are yet to get it yes. are we not moving too fast no we are not going too fast i mean uh, we are talking about like uh, more than 100 years in terms of slavery mm. and we are talking about more than uh, since the first country of african in, uh, country was independent so we are not moving too fast it's time for africa to uh, to be compensated in terms of reparations and uh, what is owed to africa i mean as you can see there's a continuous underdevelopment of africa and it has nothing to do with because of uh, we cannot manage our resources because our resources are always extracted and to advance the economies of other countries. Mm. So. Since this call was made, I mean, I think years back, Yes. and the people are supposed to act, they are yet to act. Yes. So how much noise can we make to get them to act? Well, I mean, uh, if you have not been a part of the movement for a long time, you mm. think that no progress has been done. But people who made noise, some of them passed on. But right now, the issue of reparation, especially in the United States, has taken a different dimension, mm -hmm. that there's some state governments, California, and other parts of the United States are addressing and they are willing to talk about reparations. Mm -hmm. And you have seen the waves of um, uh, Western leaders apologizing all over. All over. I mean, mm -hmm. the king was in Kenya, and uh, the president of Germany was in uh, uh, Tanzania. So there is some shift in terms of consciousness, but not enough for us, mm. uh, for Africa to make a difference. Unless we make a noise, then we are going to move the needle. So justify the call for reparation for me. I mean, in my case, I'm from Namibia. Mm. And uh, what happened briefly, Germany came to Namibia and fought the, my people, over Herero and Nama people. And they killed 80% of those uh, groups. Mm. And uh, the killing was not the fighting, it was intentional. And they had an extermination order against them, like uh, they have to be exterminated. They would mm. use the word exterminate. Their first concentration camps was there. And so what we are asking for the German to pay reparations mm. because they have, we have a history of them doing the same to other mm. groups. How far have you gone in, in Well, uh, the response? Germany uh, half-heartedly apologized and then they said that we are going to give you 1.1 billion dollars however over 30 year period and we are not going to call it reparation we are going to call it grants mm. um, to help with your projects but we are not interested in projects we want reparations that we can determine how that to invest it in our communities and we have to uh, put it industry or to create industry you cannot create industry with mm. grants from uh, europe i mean from germany so, and we lost land because when they kill our people, they clear people of their land. So 80 or 60% of the land of the Herero and Nama people in Namibia today, mostly are resettled by the German for our settlers who are Namibians, of course. Mm. So, but we have to try to reconfigure uh, uh, this uh, imbalance in order for us to address that. So, so, so you think that African countries should speak with different voices or all of us should come together and make our voices known? We should all speak with one voice. The issues are slavery, colonialism, be the genocide in Namibia or the, 
the Congo or colonialism or slavery in uh, Ghana, mm. they are similar. They have all similar because they, they play out the same. Because when you're talking about the historical term, sometimes we fool ourselves. But the current conditions, unless we learn to tie our current economic condition in, uh, of Africa to the past, then we are going to be continually perpetuating, mm. I mean, to miss the mark in terms of... But you had the leaders on the continent, you heard them speak. Yes. You heard our president, yes. Nana Okufuado. Yes. Uh, when he addressed the just ended United Nations General Assembly, he made the same call. Yes. Beyond the talks, what do we expect that they do to force those who benefited from slavery to act and act right? Well, we at the meeting, I mean, I'm so glad with the president made that call and many other diploma, I mean, uh, ambassadors also made the call and we are hoping that other African leaders and even African people who are influential opposition artists will join the call and amplify their voices. Mm. But in that meeting we had over 200 uh, activists from all over the world. Mm. And so we have a program. We have to go back to our community and amplify the world, our voices for call for justice, mm. reparations and uh, restitutions. I mean, of course, uh, you are probably aware that there is a museums in Europe that Artifacts, uh, are artifacts still in holding on to it. The yes. big money of that. Why mm -hmm. is it that these issues that cannot be returned? Mm -hmm. We are not benefiting from it, but they have been made by the artists from our, mm -hmm. from the continent. Do uh, you have? Uh, is there an estimate as to how much? I mean, we, we we require from them. Well, we cannot quantify suffering. We, it's hard to quantify even the uh, Atlantic slave trade, but we know what how they compensate it. I mean, you, I mean we are, at this point, we have universities and professors. Mm. They can quantify that. It's not really that difficult. Uh, but when you put a price tag to human life, sometimes you kind of uh, miss mm. the mark and you discourage people because then... Uh, but there is a moral aspect of it too. I mean, some of us, uh, we would like the reparation to include the dignity of the people, mm. of our people, to restore. How do you restore our, to restore our cultural... Uh, values that has been taken. Someone taking a mask, uh, uh, something from Africa or grave to Europe, that people have been uh, wronged in many ways. Mm. So we have to come together as Africans that this meeting was trying to achieve and maybe in the future in order for us to craft an agenda and even to come to that point like what is owed to us? And again, my, my, other, my other question is, is the reparation would, it, would, would that be enough to, 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 to cover the scars left by this you know, unfortunate incident? I will say that if there is a, enough uh, compensation, the reparation, we're talking about billions or billions or trillions of dollars, then we can sit down and re, how we can reconstruct or how we can move forward. Of course, the damage is that uh, Western U uh, countries has done to Africa and African people, it's unquantifiable. Mm. But then we have to involve the civil society. I mean, reparations, we are not asking only to be between the two governments and governments. We are talking about the civil society to get involved. And we are talking about the community, traditional leaders, so that they can construct an agenda, common agenda, as to how to move forward or how that can be used. And um, you see a lot of our youth are now running to Europe, risking their lives. Why? Because it's under, Africa is underdeveloped. Absolutely. So if we can say that, okay, we are going to create industries here, so that people can benefit. Then they have to create your own stuff, give money to uh, young women and um, uh, men and women to come up with the idea how to develop our own continent. Of course, Africa, I mean, China many years ago was probably at the same level uh, like yes. Africa. India was, but they moved on. So why not Africa or Africans? All right, my final question to Jafta as we take leave of us. So what happens next after this international conference? Uh, I think there's going to be follow-up. I mean, they've devel uh, we develop a communique uh, in terms of uh, what can be done and some recommendations. And of course, it's just uh, up to the African Union and uh, other head of state to uh, give support or to lend their full support to uh, your president in order to advance and carry on their reparation agenda and to open up their country to similar conference so that the message of repression should not be in Ghana, but she's also amplified to other countries, including Southern Africa, West, I mean, uh, East Africa. Mm. All right, Jafta, thank you very much for thank coming. We wish you the very best in this pursuit of reparation for the, for, 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 for the African continent. Okay, and you. we just hope and pray that 
Thanks. Uh, those who are <laughs> those who have blocked their ears, they will finish and listen and listen. All right. Very good. So you are still watching the pause here on Joy News. We're taking a short break when we return. As we head into the Christmas festivities, Joy News is intensifying its drive safe campaign to keep our roads safe. So what should we look forward to? We've got a Joy uh, Thought Leadership event coming your way this weekend.